A, B, C. A, always B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, another episode of Scared Money Don't Make Money. Uh, we have a great guest for you guys today. Honestly, I feel like we are starting to hit our entrepreneur section of the show because uh, th- th- on the next episode, you guys will see we have someone who's creating a bank. These guys are creating an app to, to change the game of recruitment and hiring and so forth. So as always, it's your favorite recruiter, uh, your favorite recruiter's favorite recruiter, Cam, and always see, your see, boy. See? Gee, you couldn't even say it right. You couldn't even say your favorite recruiter. <laughs> favorite recruiter because it just don't me sound up. right. It, that, nope, I'm not messing that's, you up. that's not what it is. Wow. <laughs> Roy's my biggest hater. He's also my biggest fan, as you will come to learn. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the best partnership started like that. I promise you that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you guys wouldn't mind uh, introducing yourself, tell us a little bit about how you got started, how you guys came together, and then we'll get into it. Of course. Anthony, you want to lead that? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I guess as far as, you know, how we got started, um, Omar was introduced to me uh, through a colleague that I worked with at my previous organization. And, uh, you know, he, he wanted to do something with jobs and videos. So for me personally, I, I've spent the last 10 years uh, working in, in the HR vertical. I started a company 10 years ago called Bright.com, where we were using, uh, you know, data analytics to help people match uh the best jobs to the best opportunities and and kind of scale them on a score from zero to 100 and uh, we would use that to help people find roles that uh we felt that they were a good fit for Uh, we were acquired in 2014 by linkedin i spent the next five years there um running the uh, job seeker ecosystem for linkedin and uh really growing that that area of the organization um, so I've been really interested in helping people, you know, put food on the plates for their families at the end of the day for a long time. And it's something that I think as a technologist, we always have the opportunities to help organizations be more efficient. But when you can marry that with helping people in a more visceral and direct way, it's something that is really enticing to me. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, when I first met Omar, you know, he said he wanted to do something with with video and jobs. and uh, that's a really underserved uh, area of the marketplace, and it was really interesting to me. So I think the first time we were put on a call together, um, you know, what maybe anticipated to be a 15-minute conversation turned into like a two or three-hour conversation. And by the time I hung up, you know, it, it, I just kind of my mind just kept rolling and rolling, and I spent the next couple of days just continuing to think and, and iterate through the ideas and the possibilities. And I guess, as they say, the rest is history. All right. So, yeah. so now we get to hear from Omar's perspective. He's like, man, I met this dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of, um, I'm like, yeah, I am crazy. Uh, some people say that I'm like overexcited and all that, but I'm going to be calm today. So I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to take it easy. Uh, pretty much how, how this started. I was working with Cisco uh, at sales and they were hiring a bunch of sales development reps. A lot of the people they were hiring uh, were not really great fit for the role. They weren't just happy at the role. A lot of them would quit in a week or two. And um, I went to the manager. I asked him, how do you get these people? And uh, they're like, oh, we pay a recruiter for $5,000. And they come in for an interview and we hire them on the spot. And I just thought about <laughs> it. I'm like, okay, so is that, a, is that really a way to like, uh, you know, see if a person is right fit for the role or not? And um, that's kind of, and then I looked at it from the other side, right? I've applied for jobs myself, you know, as Omar, I've applied to jobs before some people, you know, just never respond to me. And um, that, that problem is called the application black hole. That is a whole nother problem to deal with. (laughs) Um, So the truth is resumes can't talk. That's Mm. the problem. That's the core problem. And if you want something to uh, basically communicate to whoever is looking at your resume or your cover letter that you are a great fit for the role. There isn't something out there right now that makes it easy and simple for any company to add that into their work, mm-hmm. you know, workflow basically. And that's how job pixel came to, came about. I uh, met Anthony through a good friend of mine uh, who used to work with Anthony at his previous company. And um, he told me, I'm pretty sure Anthony is going to really enjoy the call. And we <laughs> jumped on a call. And then it's Anthony calling me every day for the next week <laughs> from uh, what are we naming this to uh, 
Uh, who else are we going to be snatching, uh, you mm -hmm. know, to bring on, to, on board to the team from, you know, which person's advice. He did throw me to the wolves a little bit for a little <laughs> while to test me. Let's just say uh, he kind of threw me to a couple of people that are like literal veterans in the hiring space. Like they are the top people in the hiring space, like yeah. from an HR technology standpoint. And uh, truth is they ripped me apart. <laughs> right. But, um, um, you know, but it was fun. I uh, learned a lot from them for sure, because, you know, they've told me all of the things to watch out for. Uh, yeah. Not only they came up to me and said, hey, this is how you can fuck this up. But yeah. it's also these are the ways for you to make it work. And sure. that's yeah, me and Anthony just, you know, brought in a really strong team around us. And um, this is the idea is allowing people to have the chance to express themselves much better than ever before when applying to a specific role or a job at any company they're passionate about. That's the core and that's the mission of John Pixel as a company. Awesome. And so what did you, what did you, so I know you're, you're an engineer, right, Anthony? I think I looked at your, your, your LinkedIn profile. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And then Omar, I forgot, where did you go to, what did you go to school for? Um, so I went to Davis to school. I uh, studied uh, cybersecurity, uh, right. but more on the art side. Um, I did take a lot of statistical analysis classes and things like that. Um, but um, I never wanted to follow that world. Like it's just, yeah. I, I did work at Cisco. That degree kind of helped me a little bit to work, but I was an entrepreneur in a you know, past life. Um, you know, in before Cisco, I had a company that I started right after college. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a pretty fun app. Uh, a lot of people used, uh, it was growing, but, um, a lot of things happened in my personal life that kind of stopped me from growing that vision and continuing yeah. forward. Uh, when my mom passed away, uh, end of 2019, my app is, was still out there. I was still working at the company, but I lost all of my motivation to continue. Yeah. And, um, kind of after that happened and then, uh, kind of going into 2020, which is probably one of the worst years in history. <laughs> um, uh, my app pretty much could not exist anymore, unfortunately, due to yeah. a lot of different reasons, but it was a fitness app that basically functioned on people walking and yeah. restaurants <laughs> being open. The restaurants were literally our customer and yeah. the users were people who walk, uh, between uh... March and July, there were zero walkers and all the restaurants <laughs> were shutting down. So, uh, Ooh. let's just, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, yeah, it, it was not, it had no chance to survive and surviving, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where, you know, that's kind of my background and, you know, what I do, but I just absolutely love sales. I've been in sales, uh, done a lot of sales. So I love sales. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. And so yeah. Anthony, with you starting yeah. out as an, as an engineer, what pushed you, like you said, into like that HR vertical where, and, and what, what kind of pulled you into it, you know? Well, my, my first foray into the HR vertical was when I founded uh, my previous company in, in 2010. It was Bright.com. Actually, one of the, uh, you know, so-called wolves that I threw Omar to uh, <laughs> was the one who recruited me to go co-found Bright with him. Okay. And, you know, again, this was, this was in a, at a time when, you know, big data was the big buzzword in the Valley. And, yeah. um, you know, how can we you know, take advantage of that to, to try and serve the job market better. And so that, you know, I came from a, a company previous to that, like just before that I had spent a, a short stint at Zynga and mm -hmm. it was a good reminder to myself uh, that what really motivated me was the feeling of helping people. And yeah. I wasn't really getting that at Zynga. And so when he came to me to, uh, to go start bright with him, that was, my opportunity to start start getting back on a path that I knew was going to be right for me, mm -hmm. and so that's that's what I did. Uh, basically, starting at that point, went and, and founded Bright. We were acquired by LinkedIn in 2014, and um, you know, throughout that time period, I just got really uh, close to the processes and understanding how the industry works. It yeah. really resonated with me. I think you know, anytime you can hear users come back to you with this, like, just you know, joyous look and, and on their face and this like appreciation of, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, what you've done has helped better my life. Like that's, 
that's what just tingles me that that really gets me going and um i i have a hard time replacing that with anything else so um being able to get back into that but taking a new lens on it with video um was really enticing to me because you know back in 2010 video the, the the technology of video wasn't where it is today in terms yeah. of being able to tap into that market. And yeah. not only that, but I don't think the market was ready for it, right? And and you know what, even a year ago, I'm not sure if the market was fully ready for it. But when yeah. 2020 kind of rained down on all of us, I think it yeah. caused businesses everywhere to rethink and reevaluate what their processes were and what was going to work for them. Yeah. Um, and then not only that, but I mean, we live in an era now where, you know, people use video to, you know, to, to find their, their potential spouses, you know, on, on, yeah. on the internet. Mm. And if people are willing to do that, you know, are they going to be so unwilling easier. to, you know, put <laughs> themselves on, on camera and, and try and represent themselves to an employer most effectively. I think one of the things that is really important to talk about here, you know, in, over, over my years in this industry, I can't tell you how many user studies and users I've heard from that have, you know, been quality people with, with legitimate good skills, but for, you know, any number of reasons, they, they don't have the ability to really reflect themselves in a way that allows them to stand out on a resume and in text. But if they, if you can sit down and talk with them, you, you, immediately understand that there's value that this person can bring a lot of organizations. And so, you know, when you talk to a user and they've applied for dozens, sometimes hundreds of roles and they never hear back from an employer and they, and they sit down and they talk with you and they say, man, if I could just talk with somebody, if I could just get on the phone, if I could just have somebody engage with me, I know that they would realize I'm a good fit for their organization. And that's what we want to bring to the table here with job pixel help employers really see and feel and understand the candidates um, and how they can be a good fit as team members for their organizations. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, you're as an organization, you're not hiring a piece of paper. You're hiring a human yeah. being that has, yeah. you know, um, you know, ways they, they speak and, you know, they interact and the ways they think. And it's not just the resume that matters, right? And the resume is just a part of the process to hire someone. But it's at the end of the day, when you bring someone to an interview, you're talking to the human being, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because the people who you end up interviewing are usually people who are really close together in terms of like qualifications and things like that. I mean, um, you know, uh, Cam and uh, Roy, you both are recruiters and you understand exactly this world. Yeah. You're at the end of the interview process, you're just basically meeting people that are similar on paper, different in personality. And yeah. what we're allowing to do yeah. with video is to show that difference, right? And show who is the right person for the role and who's not. And, uh, and you, another thing here as well, right? Like a resume tells you where I've been. It doesn't tell you where I want to so. go and what I'm <laughs> capable of. Yeah. And, and that's where being able to have a conversation with a human being really pulls some of that stuff out. Yeah. yeah that's, I mean, like, so like listening about the app is... It's kind to me. It's kind of what, like, in the entertainment industry, has been doing. So, how I'm how I'm taking it in is no different than an actor or actress. They send their headshot in, which is just a black and white paper photo sometimes, and like a list of what they've done. But they also send in like audition tapes. Mm. So, I, I think that's actually very smart because I was just talking to a couple of my recruiters earlier about in a lot of situations we don't have a voice when we're trying to advocate for ourselves uh, when it comes to just trying to plead a case uh, when it comes to like awards or something like that because it's just the black and white but having that man that's that's, that's ingenious <laughs> yeah I, I love that you bring yeah. up the the acting industry too we've spent a little time thinking about that Oh. Yeah, there there are a few uh, platforms out there uh, that are in just specifically created for the entertainment space. Uh, I think one is called Breakdown Express. That's the one you're talking about, Roy. Uh, Breakdown uh -huh. Express. Yeah, it's a uh, it's one of those products, but it, it's very specific for the uh, acting industry, yeah. where they basically mm -hmm. uh, like a director or recruiter 
would, uh, sorry, director would post like a very specific role. Let's just say I want to work for Lucifer or like yeah. uh, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you would, um, so, but you can't apply yourself. An agent has to apply for you, which, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. So that's I'd be wanting to apply for everything, man. <laughs> that's what I'm right? That's true, right? And look at this. You know, look at this. Put this on TV. You get views, baby. <laughs> that's, and, somebody uh, has to apply for you. Always a gatekeeper, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, always. Always. Mm-hmm. And, and that's kind of what we're changing is we're giving those companies uh, that work with us the ability to give any applicant the ability to submit a video to them straight, you know, without, yeah. without the extra coding, without the extra work, you know, just yeah. a platform that just simply easily work. And uh, Roy, so we're not we're not a, a like a mobile app. We're a web app, so mm-hmm. you don't need to download anything. Yeah. Um, so I'll show you guys a really cool little trick on it. So yeah. right now, I mean, you guys can see my camera. So yeah. here's an actual active role from one of our customers, uh, Ashley Furniture. So if you hit apply now, and you hit record video, your actual phone's camera opens up from yeah. your browser. And that's kind of one of the biggest things is that people also hate downloading new apps onto their Correct. platform that they Genius. never want to use again. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if they're applying to that one Ooh. specific role that has a video option, right? Mm-hmm. What else are you going to do with the app? Mm-hmm. So that's why we created um, a mobile, uh, you know, um, a web app that Anthony really worked really hard on. And, uh, <clears throat> so let me tell out. you some yeah. of these platforms, <clears throat> Apple, <clears throat> really make (laughs) using your camera uh not through an app store download very difficult i've never Um, heard of it yeah yeah right yeah maybe there'll be something someday oh yeah when omar showed me i was like man so so yeah so let's that's a good segue though let's talk about some of the things that you and i talked about like the features omar like you know the things that you plan on doing with the application when it comes to like giving the the employer you know the power to like search keywords that people talk about and stuff like that yeah so we're those things uh i kind of we're gonna discuss probably at a later date no. uh, <laughs> we're just not there yet um that's gonna happen with time but a lot of um you know we're definitely we're, we're basically gonna create the new way for you to figure out which applicant is the right one for you pretty much yeah uh but um what we have right now uh so far is a very simple way for you to simply post a video of you saying, hi, I'm hiring a retail sales associate for yeah. our San Francisco location. We pay you 15 bucks an hour. Um, in order to get this job, you have to be very nice to people. Um, you have to <laughs> communicate really well and you have to show up on time. <laughs> the person comes in, gr- grabs their phone, um, hits the record application video. They record a video themselves. I you know, my name is Omar. Uh, I will show up on time. I believe, you know, being timely is super important. Um, I love to smile. So smile in your video because to show that you actually smile and be nice yeah. and communicate really well. And that's what it needs. Res- no matter how many words you put in a resume or a cover letter, that will yeah. never be able to be reflected ever. And that's what, that's the beauty um, of video. And um, as recruiters, of course, uh, you know, I know you guys source, right? You reach yeah. out to people, you say, Hey, come, you know, come join, you know, the military, come do this, come do that. I'm sure you guys do also some side because obviously you're moving from military to civilian recruiting. Right. So, you know, it's similar to your job. When you're sourcing people, you have an active job post. A lot of people are interested in the role, but it's really hard for you to find out who is the right person for this role and not without jumping on a call with them or seeing something from them to be able to, you know, decide whether they're a person worth, continuing the conversation with or not. And that's what also video allows you to do is, you know, an ability, a way to, you know, let people tell you who they are easily. On um, their own time as well, yeah. right? It's, uh, it's yeah, asynchronous. That's, so exactly. yeah. you get an opportunity there to, to be able to send out a notification to, you know, a list of applicants. I mean, there's a lot of organizations that get hundreds or thousands of applications for a yeah. role. And then you guys know this as recruiters, you, you got to sift through all that. You got to go through all mm-hmm. that. If you can, if you can get a video uh, of these, of these applicants and really see and feel them more directly. Now you're able to really drive into your shortlist a lot more efficiently and effectively. 
And so I think we feel that, especially with the world of recruiting in particular, yeah. that we're getting a lot of traction and a lot of interest um, because, you know, not only do these like workflows and pipe, pipelines change, you know, from recruiter to recruiter and job to job, but it really allows them to um, be able to start that conversation with a candidate, but then they can package up that applicant video and send it over to a hiring manager in like a short list way. And yeah. we make that very easy on the platform. Hey, here's a list of applicants that we think are going to be a really good fit for your role. And you send that to the hiring manager. And, and at that point, it's already curated. And now the hiring manager can see and feel and experience that candidate in a very direct and personal way and be yeah. able to make a more informed and intelligent decision, you know, possibly to go along in, in, in addition to the resume. Yeah. yeah. See, I like, I like, um, yeah. what I liked a lot about it was how the, employer does a video as well they they can and, and because i mean how many things do we see job descriptions where you're like really bro i don't need two and a half pages mm -hmm. of bullshit like just say what you want the person to do and so i like I, to ooh. joke i like to joke <laughs> that the, the only thing more plagiarized than job descriptions on on the internet are legal documents so oh my, seriously <laughs> and so i mean i mean so i liked it because i'm like now you're now it almost is a, a, uh, an opportunity to put them on the spot where it's like, okay, cut through the bullshit. What do you want this new hire to do? Because because now you have to yeah. explain it. You can't just yeah. tell them to read the job description. So I definitely like how it creates this kind of synergy where it's it's a lot. The communication is so much easier, easier digested by both parties and and also given. Yeah. Yeah, um, and you know what? Not only I'm sorry, Omar. No, no, go ahead, Anthony. No, please. To the wolves. The, the, the other, the other, <laughs> the other part of that, right? Like you, you guys acknowledge the job description, right? We actually spent a lot of time talking about the job description text and whether or yeah. not we we even wanted to include that on our platform because, you know, this vision is about video, right? And using right. that that person to person synergy and that feeling of, of back and forth communication, not about reading text on a page. And right. so, you know, to, to your point, like you got all this long winded here, we've got an intern role and you need 10 years of experience and like this plethora of skills, you know, across like 20 different skill sets, mm -hmm. you know, to ever be considered, it's like, come on, you know, just here, this is what the role is. Tell yeah. me about it as an applicant. I'm going to tell you what I'm all about. And we're gonna go from there. Yeah, not to mention, like you said, it, it, the the uh -huh. the humanizing of people. Because let's be real, not everybody has every single qualification that somebody wants. Ninety percent of the time, the recruiter and the employer are gonna they're gonna meet at some point 80, 80, 85 percent maybe, and they'll be like, "Look, the other fifteen percent comes from you know the swag this dude's gonna bring to your office." So you know, we'll we'll charge it to the game, right? <laughs> yeah. What you got? What you got, Roy? Nah, you good. No, I was about to say, um, like, so for like the timing of the videos, are there, is that going to be dictated by the employer uh, as far as like, like how long they want the video to be or does it just give like the applicant like free range? Um, yeah. To, so like, if they want to make it a 20 minute video. Um, Anthony, you want to answer that? Yeah, right now we, yeah. we limit the videos to two minutes. <laughs> We've talked okay. about whether or not we want to put additional controls in the hands of the employer to extend or, or contract that further. Uh, we haven't made that available at this point in time, but I think we felt like two minutes, you know, it's kind of that like Twitter mentality, like, you know, get mm -hmm. in and get out, say what it is that you need to say, do it in a concise way. And um, you should be able to accomplish that within a couple minutes. Twitter gives me a headache because, of, because, okay. of, because of how short no, it is. No, okay. <laughs> I mean, it makes you hey, be concise. Hey, I, yeah. no, you know, I'm because it's, it's not, not the concise. end of the conversation either, right? <laughs> like at the end of the day, this this is the beginning of a conversation that you hope to yeah. have through a hiring pipeline. Yeah. It's it's not the end interview. It's not right. the big hour long, you know, and you do that five times over and you spend your whole day, you know, talking yeah. with everybody in the organization. This isn't that. This is about here, get to know me. Here's who I am. This is yeah. what I can offer. Now you can see and experience and feel me. And you know, you know, especially for some of these types of roles where, you know, maybe you're in front of house and you're, you know, you're in front of uh, clients, you know, or customers or whatever every day. Like 
being able to have, you know, a positive attitude and some charisma and, you know, present yourself well is as, is as much of value to that organization as, you know, what your last job or your last two or three jobs were. Yeah. Yeah. And also but you I can retake probably... it as many times as you can, as you want. So yeah, that, until that you're, you're happy. Like a, a one and done. <laughs> no, we don't like oh, say, man. oh, you got one chance and that's it. <laughs> no, uh, you can do it as many times as you want until you get it right. The American it's Idol a, of, of jobs. <laughs> and the employer will never know. And the employer will never know. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. I like that even more. So it's like a digitized yeah. elevator. It's, uh, what's that? A digitized elevator, elevator pitch? Elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. That's a good I, way to think yeah. about it. That's a good, th- that's a good way I'm to not sure I'd want to be on an elevator for two minutes, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Roy, yeah, Roy's yeah, my yeah. non my non techie. I'm the he's he, I just he just shows up and we record. So he he gets really happy when he understands concepts and can <laughs> say yeah, I do. Like, yo. It's like when I watch, it's like when I watch Big Bang Theory, like ah, I got it, I got it now. But it's like the it's like the tenth time I watched the episode. Oh, uh, but by the tenth time I watch it, I'm like ah, I get it now. So so I'm what are sorry. some of the so what are some of the major um. So what are some of the major hurdles you guys had to had to cross over when you first started? Yeah, right. right. Oh. <laughs> when when we first started, right? Yeah, right. when we first started. Like, oh like my a, god. It was like a year uh, ago, the, right? I mean it's it has not no, even. What are we six, six no. months six, in? Six months I would in. say I would say we're we're still in our infancy and yeah, really building s- out what we want to be when we grow up. Yeah, right. I, I, I definitely <laughs> think we're a lot faster. Uh, I mean, we got really big customers pretty quickly. We've made revenue pretty quickly. We launched the product pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. But um, so let me, let me, I guess, let me start with this. So the first problem we've ever had is naming the company. I think that, that one was really interesting. <laughs> um, so like that was an interesting argument. So Anthony has a car that has, uh, so he, he likes the letter X. Let's just say that. Okay. Okay. okay? He just absolutely loves X. It's fine. It's Am I wrong, thing. Anthony? <laughs> it's, it's your, it's your yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. His, his little, like, um, I can't tell you his license plate because it's a custom license plate. And you, someone can yeah, yeah, yeah. you know pick it up, but he has an X in it and it's a custom <laughs> license plate and it looks really pretty on his car. And he always, so he was like, how did the whole job pixel conversation happen? We we thought of like get. I think, I think I it ro- started with get bread. Oh yes. Okay. So I. Uh, <laughs> yes. So my, I'm yeah, so glad that, I asked this. That was my <laughs> stupidest idea. I think it was getbread.com uh, because we help people get jobs to get this bread. You know what I mean? So. Um, Such a millennial thing. I, I was like, um, I was like, Omar, you know, like, love you, dude, but like, I don't know that we want to conjure like ideas of bread lines as far as our app is concerned. Yeah. And I did. Um, the other one was dough, dough. So like dough and dough. So like, like, let's get, let's get this. I dough. think Omar was hungry. Yeah, I was hungry. I'm always hungry. So hey, I we're, kind we're of gonna like, have a, we're gonna have a lunch meeting one day. Yeah. So Anthony was like, okay, so we have the jobs. And we're making videos. Yep. Pictures are created from pixels, right? And we're giving a, a person and like basically, um, you know, to show themselves who they are. Yeah. And that's a part of their resume and their background and all of that. And those old little pieces are pixels, right? That create one big picture. And that's what John Pixel. He, he makes it sound so deep, but I, I'll tell you yeah, what actually not. happened I'll, behind I'll the fine. scenes, right? I'm trying uh, to help you because it was boring. Yeah. <laughs> well. No. We're, we're, yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's that old picture of like everybody's view of what Google looks like and you uh-huh. got the, the engineer's view and the product manager's view and the yeah. external world view of this perfect plane, right? Uh, but it's all mm-hmm. duct taped together. But at the yeah. end of the day, right, like what it boils down to is you got to be able to buy a domain. And so no. you, you're, go, you're, going, you're going to GoDaddy or, you know, yeah. you, whatever your registrar is and you're just typing in everything you can think of. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, 95% of them aren't available. Correct. And so you, you distill it down to like the 5% that are. And then, you know, all of a sudden like that, you know, I, in my case, I was, I was uh, in the kitchen with my wife and I was just kind of standing there lost and daydreaming about <laughs> what became job pixel because, you know, that's all I was thinking about at the time. And yeah. I'm sure she was trying to talk to me and, you know, having like watch the kids or something like that. And I, I probably didn't hear anything she was saying, but I stopped 
And I was like, wait. And I ran to my computer and I typed in, I typed in job pixel and it was available. And I'm like, oh, there it is. is. There we this go. And I, I, I called Omar immediately. I'm like, hey, dude, what, what do you think? <laughs> He's like, well, is, is Dodo available? <laughs> no. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm buying it. Can I do it? And then he just like, I was like, I mean, I guess. And he just calls me that like literally 30 minutes later. I'm not gonna mention how much we paid for it because it was a lot. And uh, but he's just literally called me and he's like, Yeah, I bought it. I'm like, well, I guess this is well, real now. Did we did bread. we incorporate the company before or after Anthony? Oh, oh definitely incorpor- after. Yeah, it was after. Yeah, and then that's kind of where I started, like, you know, going through the legal work and finding yeah. a lawyer and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, that's how it came about. But for me, I guess the mental model that Anthony went through to find the name Dropixel was that. I'll keep it at that. I'll always be convinced that was it. We, we can always retroactively apply the story to the thought process. It makes exactly. it definitely makes yeah. for a better story. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that I thought Dodo was 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 fire. <laughs> Oh my Weird. god! I wish I could find. I don't want to. I, like, I tell you, I don't want to go the way of the dodo. Yeah, the dodo. Uh, the dodo. The dodo. The dodo. <laughs> Ours. Was, that's that's something I had to I had to deal with too because we started out. You know, we LLC the podcast. We don't. I don't have a domain for the podcast, but I have a domain for the the uh, recruiting company, which is parents of the production company. And when I first got it, I had a .dot com, but it was extremely and ridiculously long, and I was like this shit looks stupid and so i then found another domain to shorten it but then it ended up being a dot company and i was like all right does this look like shady and so i started you know i looked on the internet and it's like no like you know there's all types of you know dot this dot that whatever and so i was like all right bet um but i did run into my first problem with another recruiting system where it will not let me use that as my email address so i had it won't accept that top level domain Correct. It won't yeah. accept. It won't accept my cam at RC Group dot company. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'll have to use my podcast. You should get dot fm. I I thought about that. Yeah, you should get dot fm. A lot of the famous podcasts out there um, have dot fm. So acquired dot fm. Uh, Tim Ferriss also has a dot fm. A bunch of Last. people have dot fm. When we get over. So. When we get over a thousand downloads for every episode, I'll think about it. Sounds Boom. Good. And then I'm going to call it the Dodo podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, yeah. so, where do you, so where are you guys? So, you know, as we, as we kind of wrap up, um, you know, we like to ask kind of two questions and obviously, cause there's both, you know, both you guys are here. I would obviously like both you guys to answer. So the first Ooh. one is, um, this, part. You know, <laughs> this is his favorite part of the show. Um, so with you guys, start you know starting up the company obviously you had a company both of you had companies before things like that um what would be kind of i would say your first piece of advice for someone that wants to start their own company and and you know something something that you can give them to let them know you know to keep it keep it pushing you know words of wisdom uh can i go anthony go ahead yeah so i think the the number one advice uh, i've always gone is so from my mentor which is um a B team can turn an A idea into a B idea and an A team can turn a B idea into an A idea. And this, uh, this mentality is really important. Always pick team first, like literally always, um, yeah. because the best team in the world will always turn literally doo-doo to gold. <laughs> Not, and, and the worst teams will turn gold into doo-doo. And uh, that's the whole idea. Focus on team, hire the best people. And for God's sake, don't hire your friends. Make your co-founder your friend after you hire them. Uh, yeah. That's, I think, one of the things. There are people out there for sure that have succeeded by bringing their friends. But a lot of times it actually really hurts your judgment. And it doesn't make, because you feel like they're your friend. You can't argue with them about X, Y, and Z when you have a very strong, you know, but when you're with another person that you've just met and you guys have a very strict business relationship, you're yeah. forced to take action because Correct. your credibility and everything is on the line. So that's the idea. It's like always find the best people around you and surround the best yourself with the best people around you. And, and the other thing is the best people won't come around 
unless you have a really great idea, really great execution, and they believe in you. That's also one of your early indica indicators that you might have success or failure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I, I guess I would, would have effectively have said the same thing. I presented a little bit differently. It's just surrounding yourself with good people. So, surround yourself with people who know the industry that you're talking about, but maybe aren't beholden to it. You know, mm -hmm. being able to all the most successful startups in the world are like changing the game within established industries, you know, whether it's Airbnb or, um, you know, any of these other companies, it's not like any of this stuff didn't exist before, but they came at it with a new approach and a new mindset and a new mentality. But having people around who know the terrain and know the lay of the land and can warn you where the pitfalls are and where the sharp rocks are and, and help you avoid those things, it can save you countless cycles. And when you're running a startup, when you're starting a company, every dollar you spend matters, every minute that you spend matters, and you're constantly running against the clock before you run out of runway. And so, you know, you've got to make the most of every cycle that you have and you want to try and you, you're always going to be exploring. You're always going to be trying new things. You're going to make mistakes, but you want to try and minimize those mistakes. You want to be correct more often than you're wrong. And uh, the best people have a lot of that intuition about what's going to work and what isn't going to work. And even if they're not necessarily going to be part of your company in working with you day to day, having those people as advisors and having those people that you can bounce things off of and, and get their feedback on them will help you get to uh, a position where you have, uh, where you can make that correct decision a lot more quickly than you would if you had to, you know, just inch your way there and, and make every mistake along the way. So, you know, everything else to go along with, with, what Omar said, I think is absolutely real as well. You know, we, we have a very open uh, dialogue with one another where we're both constantly providing each other feedback and pushing each other to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And I've, I've told Omar this, you know, for a long time. I think one of the reasons why I, I decided to, to partner with him on this project is because I saw the way that he would internalize feedback and self-reflect and mm -hmm. like, turn that over and, and use that to, to make improvements. And uh, if, if, if you and your partner can both be that way and yeah. hear from each other, but not make it personal, use it yeah. as an opportunity to grow. Um, the people who can learn from their mistakes and self-reflect and improve, those are the people I always want to be around. Yeah. And I think that's what makes Roy and I a good team because Roy Roy was my trainer when I first came into recruiting so we have that dialogue and so even though we're friends he's my my biggest critic also also my, my, my wife even asked me that she's like did you run this idea by Roy because you know he's going to tell you if it's a bad idea <laughs> um and then so, so anyway so and our last question is when you guys you know the name of the show is scare money don't make money so when you guys hear that phrase what does that mean to you Anthony. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at, at, at the end of the day, right? Like we're here to, to build a successful business. And so if, you, if you're not willing to like take that leap of faith, you're, you're gonna be working for somebody else forever. And, you know, not everybody is, is gonna be in a position to be able to, you know, start their own company or, you know, there's a lot of life factors that come into play, no. um, but sometimes, when you have a lot of conviction and your mind, body, and spirit are telling you that you need to do something to make a change in your life, you got to listen to that voice. And every time that I've done that, I've always found myself to be a lot happier than when I was sitting and commiserating, you know, working for a corporate Goliath or whatever it might be and just feeling like, burdened by the stress of politics and the day-to-day -day and everything else and I think your body and your mind and your spirit are going to tell you when it's time to make a change and yeah. then there's always that fear of the unknown and the fear of change um, but you know it's it's like skydiving you might be scared of it but the things you're most scared of are also the things that are going to give you the most exhilaration when you actually do it yeah and uh, I mean for me it's uh, it's about the um the, the struggle, 
right? There's a, there's a struggle. Every single one of us has a fight, right? They fight with the market trying to sell their product. They fight with, you know, uh, a developer that is developing a product for them, or, you know, they fight with someone at the gas station while they're pumping gas because they took their spot. Right. (laughs) But I think, I think the hardest, the hardest fight in history, in the world is not the fight with anyone else out there. It's the fight with yourself to push yourself to do something specific. I think that will always be the hardest fight. And scared money uh, doesn't make money. That that idea is um, is basically the what you have inside you, your drive, your energy, and everything is not going to make you anything if you're keeping it inside and you're not fighting with yourself and saying, "Hey, get the fuck out of your off of your ass, and go <laughs> do something." Right? Yeah. That's kind of what it is. That that's how I see it. It's if you're not doing, um, you know, something good with what you have, mm-hmm. it, it will just lose its value. And that yeah. money, think money, if you keep it in a savings account or like, you know, a zero, zero yield savings account, it will lose its value, right? Yeah. You know, we're between, you know, inflation rates between two to 3% a year. You're going to lose the value of your money very quickly. Like $100 back in 1980 is nothing compared to $100 today. And, yeah. uh, and that's the whole idea. So if, you're keep, if you keep, you know, your potential locked up, if you keep your money locked up, if you keep, you know, you keep your emotions locked up, it just does not do you any well. And you have to fight with yourself to let these things out so you can use them to do better. Yeah. yeah. I like hey. it. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going skydiving and I got to get out of the <laughs> problem. So uh, I, I still haven't been skydiving. I'm scared to death. <laughs> I want, I want, I, I want to so bad. I was listening to a thing with Will Smith this morning. He's talking about how when he went skydiving, they were like one, two, and then they kicked him out because on three people grab onto the door. <laughs> and yeah, then oh, that's, that's very true. I yeah. say that from experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I was, I was military, right? So as well. So, um, you know, there was always that whole paratrooper, you know, thing and whatnot. And I, I don't know, but I will say though, you know, thank you guys for doing what you do. Um, yeah. You know, having been a former uh, service member myself, you know, I, I really appreciate, you know, people who support service members and, mm. you know, trying to do, you know, good for the country. And, and uh, again, you know, the, the, the opportunities here um, to help people are, yeah, uh, it, it manifests in different ways, whether it's, you know, through patriotism and, you know, supporting your country or, you know, kind of having the opportunity to do what we do to hopefully help people get jobs at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you know, we all want to be part of something bigger and, and hopefully to help people along the way. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Thank you, gents. Yeah, um, like, seriously, so, thank you. What you're doing is great. Try, man. So um, tell them where to find you. This is your self-promotion little block. So, you know, who you are, where to find you, you know, and in that way, maybe you'll get some customers. And they, Yeah, they'll... absolutely. <laughs> uh, so we're on LinkedIn. Uh, I personally only use LinkedIn and sometimes Twitter. Uh, so uh, on LinkedIn, uh, just job pixel, J O B P I X E L. And then, uh, my, uh, name is Omar Khatib, O M A R K H A T E E B founder at job pixel. You'll be able to find me. Um, uh, Anthony, go ahead. Jobpixel.com. That's all you need to know. Yeah. Jo- yeah that's all. Go there. He does go not, there. Yeah. Live it. Love go it. Go there. Um, yeah. And, um, we're uh, more than happy, uh, you know, to offer, you know, your listeners um, a discount off of the, you know, monthly subscription uh, of our product. Just reach out to me. Uh, let me know that you uh, listen to Cam and Roy and I'll hook you up. I won't, mm. I won't mention what it is, but uh, yeah. once, once you guys reach out to me, I'll let you know. <laughs> All right. Well, Roy, uh, any, any parting comments, sir? Hear me? Yeah, you. Keep oh, it brief, though. They, 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 Go here, so. Oh yeah, I'm go. <laughs> so um, uh, the B team can turn a good idea into doo doo. Uh, the A team can turn no. a good idea, bad idea. <laughs> flip flop. Well, just just and, flip that and jump out of a plane. Yeah, pretty much. An A an plane. A team can turn a B idea into an A idea, Correct. and a B team can turn an A idea into a B idea. I have dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> on that note we appreciate you guys uh, thank um, you so much you know and we'll see you guys later all right thank you take care bye